D'Amico Ryans was announced Tuesday afternoon to be the Houston Texans' next head coach. Thursday, they held a press conference. And so now, time for the Texans to work on building their coaching staff around him. Cody and I discussed the candidates for the coordinator positions. It's a dream job because I'm here at home in H-Town. That's a dream job, right? I get to work with Nick, with Kyle, to build this team the right way, right? We have a, a, young, a young team. Right? We have a lot of draft capital. We're, we're excited to add even more talent to the team that we have. And I, it's a dream job because we can win here. And we're going to win here by collaborating, working together, building it the right way with the right people. You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, everybody, to a Saturday episode of the Locked On Texas mm. Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm John Hickman, joined by Cody Davis. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn helps you find candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On <clears throat> slash Locked On NFL. As mentioned, Amigo Ryans was announced Tuesday afternoon, and now the Texans are working to build a coaching staff around him. Uh, the Texans have completed interviews with the following. They've completed an interview with Bengals wide receiver coach Troy Walters, the passing game coordinator for the 49ers, Bobby Slowick. Also, mm. the team has interviewed Patriots tight end coach Nick Cayley for their offensive coordinator positions. According to sources, Bobby Slowick is the immediate favorite to land the job. Slowick, who served uh, one season as the 49ers passing game coordinator, helped San Francisco put together one of the best offensive teams in the league. The 49ers averaged 227 passing yards while scoring 27 points during the 2022 season in seven games with Brock Purdy as their starting quarterback before losing to the Eagles in the NFC Championship game. The Eagles threw for an average of 300, 200. 35 yards, excuse me, 14 touchdowns and two interceptions. More impressive is the 49ers drive success rate, which refers to the ability of an offense to generate first downs. That is so important to me. The 49ers were <laughs> second in the league in drive success rate, while the Houston Texans were at the bottom of the league in this category. Cody, how would you describe Slovic chances of being named the offensive coordinator for the Texans? I would say that is probably someone in the ballpark of 80 to 90%. Um, John, you hit all of the points of why Bobby is the favorite. Um, I talked to a source as well, and they said that a lot of the success that took place after Jimmy Garoppolo got hurt was due to Bobby. And I like that because, you know, when you take a look at the 49ers offense, uh, of course, a lot of it has to do with Kyle Shanahan. And it's understandably so why. I mean, we we mentioned it on this show several times that Kyle is arguably, if not the best offensive-minded coach as of right now in the game. However, they say in terms of what they was able to do with Brock, Brock Purley, um, the things that they had and had in mind to do with Trey Lance before he got injured, a lot of it came to Bobby. And it brings me back to another topic that we talked about on yesterday as to whether or not the Houston Texans are going to draft a quarterback or not. If you see a guy like Bobby, and was he and what he was able to do with Brock? And I think that offense actually got better when 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 Brock stepped in after Jimmy G got hurt. I'm kind of excited and kind of want to see what an offensive minded quarterback minded guy like Bobby can actually do with a guy like Davis Mills because I think we can all agree. Davis Mills has the potential to be a, a quality starting quarterback in this league. However, due to the inabilities of coaching staff due to um, the inabilities of having some kind of consist consistency. That's part of the reason why we've seen somewhat of a major regression in Davis Mills from his rookie campaign um, to his sophomore campaign. Now, before moving on, D'Amico Ryan's did share with us on Thursday what are the qualifications he is looking looking for in his coaching staff. All right. 
we're still going through that process. We want to find the best staff, right, that complements each other and the best staff to support our players. So we're still going through that process. How I envision the offense looking, right, we want to play with precision. We want to play with effort. We want to play with physicality. So with that being, we want to own the line of scrimmage. We want to establish the run game first, but we want to be balanced, right? We want to be able to operate with play action pass, right? We also want to be efficient. We want to have explosive playmakers who we can get the ball to. If, if it's not down the field, we want to be able to throw, as you see, throw a check down, right? And put it in the hands of an explosive playmaker and see him create. So there, everything about our offense, we want to make sure that we're adaptable to the players that we have, making sure we're playing to the strengths of our players, getting the ball in our playmaker's hand and letting them make plays. <laughs> Cody, adaptable to the players mm -hmm. we have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and by the way, by the way, when he was talking and when he was when, when the Miko was sharing of how he wanted his coaching staff to adapt to the players, especially how he wants his quarterback to play. Of course, Big Sars was sitting next to me, and Big Sars gonna whisper. He talking about Davis Mills. <laughs> Guys, so if you're only listening to the podcast, I really I encourage you guys to go watch it on YouTube so you can really see my expressions right now. Because, again, that is important. You want to break, make sure in terms of bringing in his guys, the guy that you bring in, and as of right now, Source did tell me that it is basically Bobby Slowicks to lose hmm. to come the, to become the Houston Texans offensive coordinator. And by the way, I am not opposed to. I think I've said this before. I am not opposed to bringing Pep Hamilton back as a quarterback coach. By the way, he has a good track record. Once again, yeah. So, but it is Slowicks to lose for for D'Amico Ryan's. It is about building and bringing in guys that will do what develop these players, and you have to have. Uh, chemistry and, and track record. When I look at Bobby, who only in one year did a phenomenal job with facing adversity, never threw his players under the bus whenever we you know, actually heard from him, and found a way to get the job done. Coaching to the players you have and being adaptable is something that I think the Houston Texans could benefit immensely from. And uh, again, above all, the 49ers drive success rate this refers to the ability of an offense to generate first downs. That's what made the 49ers so potent with that offense. They were able to stay on the field. Hmm. And the Houston Texans was not second in the league in, in drop success rate. Again, the Houston Texans at the bottom of the league in that category. I'm all in for Bobby Slowick. I think that he will come to Houston and in his first year, it won't be easy. Still got to figure out who his quarterback will actually be for the future. If it's for the future or if it's for a one-year rental, we'll figure that out during this offseason. <laughs> but I believe that if Bobby Slowick is a part of that same coaching tree that emphasizes development and, and really focuses on that, I'm all for it. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. Why LinkedIn? Well, they help you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools. They go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. Identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs and connect with them faster and for free. LinkedIn Jobs makes it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one easy platform. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free, terms and conditions apply. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to this Saturday installment of Locked On Texans. And you guys have read it. You guys have heard about it. There was a lot of players excited about the hiring of D'Amico Ryans. 
after his press conference on Thursday, I had an opportunity to catch up with Christian Kersey and Thomas Booker. Let's listen to what they had to say. All right, so Christian, um, can you just start how, how it feels, the Miko Ryans being the new head coach yeah, of the Houston I'm, Texans? I'm, I'm excited about it. You know, uh, I've heard a lot of good things about him. I have a good friend of mine that I played with in Cleveland, uh, Zach Dials. Mm -hmm. He played here in Houston. He played with D'Amico. So he told me, you know, nothing but great things about him. Um, one of my favorite linebacker coaches that I was, had the privilege to uh, be coached by, Johnny Holland. He was the linebacker coach in San Fran. said mm -hmm. the same thing about him. Um, you know, he's a young guy, full of energy. You see what he did with uh, San, San Fran's defense. So, you know, he's super knowledgeable of the game, um, the energy that he brings. And, you know, he's not too much older than us. Yeah. You know, uh, so, you know, young guys can still relate to him. You know, he's seen it from the lenses of a player and he's seen it from the lenses of a coach. Mm -hmm. And, you know, his leadership ability. Um, you know, I look at myself as, you know, a person that can, can, can lead and I can learn so much from him. So yeah. I'm excited uh, to be coached by him and to learn so much from him. And uh, I can say that the same that, you know, a lot of the guys are excited about the hire too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've been here since the start of the rebuild, you yeah. know, ever since um, 2021, actually. Mm -hmm. um, how does this or does this actually feel different from when they brought Cully in, from when they brought Lovey in? Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, every every guy brought something different to the table. Mm -hmm. um, I think that with D'Amico, you know, he was a player here. He's a captain here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in 06, he was drafted here. So it's not it's not that far far off. Yeah. And uh, for him to come back here and, you know, to, to, to share his knowledge with us, it's just a different feel. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, respect to Coach Cully, respect to Coach Lovey. Um, they all have different uh, coaching styles. Um, you know, and, you know, Coach Lovey, he had his, his career, what he's done, his accolades that he had. Mm -hmm. uh, same with Coach Cully. It's just a different feel, just bringing a, a younger guy in that, you know, the, the league is changing, things are changing, and somebody that, you know, a lot of guys can relate to. Um, it's just different in his way, but uh, respect to all the coaches. Uh, I'm just looking forward to, to you know, playing under uh, Coach Ryan. Yeah, and what, what does it mean for, for the defense? Because, you know, the last couple of years, mm -hmm. I, will, I, I would like to say that the defense was basically the best part of the Houston Texans over the last couple of years. He was up there in top ten in takeaways, mm -hmm. um, getting after the quarterback and stuff. Now you're bringing in another coach. You see what he was able to do in San Francisco. Yeah. As I just mentioned, like, how fired up are you guys about, about that? You know, you know, for me, you know, being a defensive <laughs> player, you know, whenever you got a defensive minded head coach, whenever oh, yeah. you got a, a, a linebacker at that, you know, I'm always excited for it. And I think that, you know, from the guys and the, the personnel that's on this, uh, this defense and, you know, what we've done in the past, man, the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. I think we have so much potential. Um, just to name a few young guys, you know, Christian Harris, uh, Derek Stingley, Jalen Petrie, uh, Thomas Booker, guys like that. You know who has a high ceiling that that came out their rookie year playing lights out. Man, the sky's the limit with these guys, and I'm just glad that I'm you know able to 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 witness it yeah. and to see you know a coach come in that's that's high energy, uh, that's been here before, and uh, get guys going. So uh, I'm I'm excited excited about it. <laughs> Last question before I let you go. Um, you know, 2023 started something new. Um, you heard Nick Casario talking about it, laying the foundation to build success. Um, where do you guys go from here? Like, how excited are you to get started? I'm, I'm excited. You know, obviously the off season just started. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we got a chance to get our bodies back. Uh, yeah. Get a chance to relax. Uh, you know, having some quality time with family. <laughs> uh, I just see my daughters here. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited, man. Um, you don't put a limit on anything. Mm -hmm. and you just see this a good group of guys. And um, we're looking forward to it. You know, obviously. 2022 season is in our past. Mm -hmm. It's in our rear view. We're looking forward to 2023, and some good things are going to happen. So, how you feel? D'Amico Ryan's new head coach of the Houston Texans. Nah, super excited. Um, he's a guy with an incredible track record of developing defensive talent, coaching defensive talent, and winning games. So, you know, you have anybody like that and somebody who's so personable and who's led so many teams as a player and as a coach, um, you can't help but be excited. Mm. And, you know, last year, your first year, you had Lovey Smith. This year, going into your sophomore season, you got D'Amico Ryan's. Um, what are some of the lessons that you learned from Lovey Smith that can actually help you make that transition to D'Amico? I think uh, the thing I learned from Coach Smith is just the importance of work and consistent work. You know, you don't get anywhere by trying it once, deciding it's not going to work and, you know, quitting. You get to where you want to be by keep, keeping on chopping on the wood. You know, so I think that's what I learned from him. And I'm excited to take that on to Coach Ryan. So I think he also believes in that, you know, workman mentality as well. 
you know, so seeing whatever kind of new little twist he puts on it, I'm really excited as a, as a defensive player in this game. Mm. And with you being a young coach, like I mentioned, going into your second year, um, this team is part of a rebuild, as you already know as well. How does it feel to be going into your second year with a new head coach that's bringing a lot of excitement and to help lay the foundation that can actually help turn this organization around? Man, there's just so much potential for growth, you know, and I think uh, – Nick was talking about it um, in the press conference as well. You know, there's a lot of talking going on right now, but mm -hmm. the work has to be put in. So I think that, you know, starting from a position of excitement is fantastic, but everybody in the building is just hungry to get back on the field, get back in the weight room, and start really turning the potential into actual growth. You know, so definitely exciting as a year two player uh, coming in, but something where it's like you got to put your, your money where your mouth is and start working. <laughs> Last question before I let you go. I talked to your teammate, Christian. He seemed more excited because he's a, a defensive-minded coach. Do you feel the same as well? So Christian is also a Bama guy, too, so oh, that yeah. probably helps a little bit as well. But you know yeah. what they say, defense wins championships. So mm -hmm. uh, I've always been a staunch believer in that. My father instilled that in me when I was young. He played linebacker as well. So having somebody who also understands that, um, mm -hmm. it's very clear, you know, it's, it's super exciting as a defensive player. John, listeners and viewers, I kind of wonder if there was some kind of bet going on between the offensive players and the defensive players to see what type of coach they was going to get. And I want <laughs> you guys to go back and take a look at how happy Christian Kersey was when talking about having a defensive-minded coach. John, once again, you know, the love, the respect, the admiration that was shown to D'Amico Ryans from both past players and current players – um, it was there in the building, man, and you guys saw it right here. Christian Thomas, both of those guys look ex extremely excited to see what the Miko Ryan's has in store for this organization. Before we get out of here today, we got to talk about whether or not Houston can find their potential position coaches while going through their offensive coordinator search. And I find this interesting when we look at Nick Haley, who was rumored to join Jonathan Cannon's Gannon's uh, staff if he was hired in Houston. He also interviewed for the offensive coordinator spot in New England before losing out to Bill O'Brien. Is it with the Patriots coaching staff during the East and West Shrine Bowl this past week? And his contract is up. And he also couldn't beat out Matt Patricia for the offensive coordinator spot in New England. And he wasn't even considered at no point during the season as I had to watch the New England Patriots suffer on offense. No, I'm not enthused about the idea of him being an offensive coordinator. However, let's look into the possibility or the idea that he may be willing to move on from New England and join the staff here in Houston as a tight end coach. Texas Texans general manager and Nick, Nick Texans general manager Nick Casario and Kaylee share a pair of uh, connections, both in their time in New England, and they also are alums of John Carroll University. Many tight ends have came through New England and has had great careers and success. And when we look at Houston uh, and D'Amico Ryan's putting together his own staff, kind of assembling his own, you know, version of the Avengers, he's hmm. going to need somebody to do the dirty work um, and, and, and help elevate an area of this team. When we look at the tight ends. And fullbacks been able to do for the 49ers. This could be a potential possibility for uh Nick Katie to come over to Houston and join their staff. And I also wouldn't be surprised if they took a hard long hard look at Troy Walters, the wide receiver coach for the Cincinnati Beagles, who also interviewed for the Texans offensive coordinator spot. You know, they may look at him and say, well, you know what? We have our OC, but how do you feel about coming to Houston and replicating what you did in, in Cincy down here in the South? Mm -hmm. And by the way, bringing him to Houston, I'm going to throw this out there because I know y'all going to love it. Bringing him to Houston may help in terms of persuading, you know, uh, maybe they can make a trade with T. Higgins and he can get his guy down here. I'm throwing it out there. Nah, it's, come on now. Nah. It's the weekend. I'm having you, fun. You, you sound like me when I be baking them outlandish takes sometimes. When I'm them outlandish trades. <laughs> uh, T, T Higgins, at some point, the Bengals are going to have to pay Burrow, Jamar, all on their payroll. They're going to find Higgins money. Is a is a one 
player that I think is not a number two. I think T. Higgins is a number one receiver, and I think that he should find a new home to go prove to the rest of the 31 teams in the NFL that he is a number one receiver. And what better place to do it than for a team that actually needs a number one receiver? Well, hopefully around that time, the Houston Texans will have their number one receiver because you also got to keep in mind the potential in Nico Collins. I do believe that he still has the qualification and the promise to be a team's number one receiver. Um, And then also around that same time, we got a guy, he shares your name, John Mechie. Around that time, he would definitely be this team's number one receiver. Yeah, I, I don't know about that, John. Man, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, I mean, I, I, I love the, 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 the positivity. I love the hope, but you know, in terms of when you take a look at John, when you take a look at Nico, this part of the reason why I'm hoping Troy be on this, um, coaching staff as the wide receiving coach, because once again. Troy is starting to have a very good track record of some very good, and I'm talking about damn good wide receivers that he has helped throughout his career. And, it seems like for the Houston Texans, they have a lot of untapped potential. And once again, you know, you talk about John Mechie, and I do believe that he's definitely going to need a coach um, who is good at developing, especially um, a coach that's going to help him get back up to speed to the not not just the NFL level, but just football level in general. And like I just mentioned, I still believe that there's hope and there's promise in Nico Collins. I mean, I spoke and joked with Nico Collins several times throughout the season. And he always telling me, hey, I want to be the next great wide receiver for this organization. He's always telling me that. And in terms of when you take a look at what Troy has been able to do throughout his career, I think he would be very good for the Houston Texans as their coaching staff. But, but you know, it's going to be real interesting to see what D'Amico Ryans is going to do with his coaching staff. But, John, listeners and viewers, for the second day in a row, um, it's a new day in the city of Houston. Um, the Houston Texans, the franchise, is finally in good hands, and I cannot wait to see what the Miko Ryan's Nick Casario. And by the way, I do want to shout out Cal McNair and Hannah with McNair. the boots, with the Texas because, boots, with the logo on the boots. Say what you want about how the last couple of years has been. You know, there's been a lot of jokes thrown at Cal McNair, but I tell you one thing. Those two individuals as owners of this franchise, the Magnares has done an awesome job of getting this franchise together. And ladies and gentlemen, once again, the coaching search, the hiring of the Miko Ryans is just part of what the Magnares got in store for this organization. That's all I got to say. Absolutely. That's all I got to say. By the way, did did y'all see J.J. Watt on Twitter? (laughs) Make sure y'all check us out on YouTube under the name Locked On Texas Podcast. Like, comment, and subscribe. Keep running those numbers up. Texan fans, listen, this is a day that you guys should be uh, happy and proud of. Again, two days in a row. I know the feeling is still there. There's going to be a lot of Texan spaces. There's going to be a lot of uh, discourse on social media within the group chats. Everywhere you go in the city Hmm. of Houston talking about how great it feels to have D'Amico Ryans, a guy that other teams wanted, a guy that the Houston Texans beat out other teams to get Mm -hmm. here in Houston. You guys don't understand where it's coming from right now. Mm -hmm. That is a win. The Houston Texans have not had a lot of wins Mm -hmm. this past season, the past two years, the past three years. And when you get it right, you got it right. When you got it right, that means, again, you know where you're going. And with D'Amico, that's the case. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C O T Y D A V I S underscore 24. And speaking of 24, 2024, McNair's got something special, baby. <laughs> but until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace. peace.